Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Morgan Cole, and you are watching the Brightline Podcast. Today is Tuesday, June 16th. It is 1010 a.m., and we're broadcasting to you live from Studio 110 in the Woodlands, Texas. Uh, joining me today, I have Gabe Lukish with Blink Lending, and we are going to discuss what's going on in the current mortgage market and um, what he's seeing with rates and availability and products that they have and all that fun stuff. So uh, stay with us and learn about loans. You're listening to the Brightline Podcast, where we talk about investment real estate, business, and many other interesting topics. Brought to you by Brightline Property Management. Brightline Property Management is a professional residential property management company located in the Woodlands, Texas, serving the Northern Houston area. Additionally, brought to you by Rentalizer, the MLS-driven investment home analyzer. Sign up today at brightlinepodcast.com slash rentalizer. That's R-E-N-T-L-Y-Z-E-R. The Brightline Podcast is produced at Studio 110 in the Woodlands, Texas, the premier studio in the Woodlands. Check out the show's website at brightlinepodcast.com where you can subscribe, contact, and sign up for our newsletter. That's brightlinepodcast.com. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoy our show. And we're back. So like I said, uh, I've got Gabe Lukish joining me today from Blink Lending, and he's going to discuss everything that uh, he can do for all of his clients and you <laughs> and flippers and purchasers and everything in between. So uh, let me introduce Gabe to you here. Uh, Gabe, how you doing? I'm doing great. Morgan, Good. thank you for having me. Man, you're welcome. You're welcome. You know, we met about a year ago or a little bit longer than that <laughs> at, a, at, an investment, at an investment club uh, meeting. Yes. And, uh, you know, we've talked a little bit and, and I'd wanted to connect with you and, and now here we are. Here we are. Here so, we are. So that's good. Beautiful setup you have here, thank by the you. way. Yeah, this is a wonderful transformation and um, I love what you've done with the place. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. you know, we've worked, uh, we've worked pretty hard to try to get this thing all uh, tuned up and, and as good as it can be for, for these types of interviews. So thank you. Anybody looking for space, this is a wonderful area to, <laughs> yeah. to maybe rent. That's right. It is available. <laughs> so uh, so we, we can certainly rent out our podcast studio to people. It holds four people. Uh, we have some high-end equipment. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm on set. You to be honest, well, yeah. good. That yeah. was the point. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's that great. Was the point. So that's awesome. I love it. So, Gabe, uh, let's start with you know who are you and sure. how did you get into this and how long have you been doing? How long have you been in the lending game? Well, yeah, that's a great, uh, great question. Thank you um, again. Thanks for having us and, or me. Um, lending. I've been in lending for the company has been in for years. Um, now I'm newer to the to the industry, but. Um, the brokerage has been, um, the, the, the uh, mentorness has been there for, for years. Uh, Paul Lemnatos is our, our, our broker. He's, goodness gracious, 15 plus years. Okay. Um, and uh, he's, he's constantly been trying to pull me into the industry. I've known him since he was, uh, ironically, 15 years old or so. Our, my brother goes to uh, middle school with him. So it's a long, uh, long history there. Our nice. families know each other. Yeah, it's a really, um, it's a very family uh, oriented company like uh, you know uh, Rick and Ravi are two of the other loan officers on our team and uh, we are all family and then there's Judy and Kelsey who uh, basically run the show they're the they're the bosses they're the glue I had no uh, idea there were that many people over yeah there. no it's it's wow. great um, we've uh, been blessed and have grown and um, it's been a wonderful experience and again I, I think of all of them like I do my family. It's uh, we keep in touch even on the weekends or on you know any kind of major event. So anyway, that's a little bit about how the uh, dynamic of uh, <laughs> of Blink is. That's you know, it's, cool. It's very family oriented, very relationship driven, and um, but we we love having fun too. But we're professional first. And so, what type of what type of products does Blink Lending offer? That's well, um, we're licensed, bonded, insured. Um, loan officers or a mortgage brokerage. So uh, what that means is, uh, think of a big bank. We mm -hmm. just do it a little quicker, uh, a little cheaper. Um, okay. Minus all the junk junk fees, right? So that's uh, conventional lending, FHA, US, uh, USDA, VA loans. Um, you can do all of those normal products that any conventional lender can do. Absolutely. And and are you guys a, uh, what is a portfolio lender where you all hold on to them, or do you all ultimately sell the the conventional products? Well, we are yes, we're a brokerage. So okay. the, the lender will uh, ultimately 
Oh, that's right. Y'all are originating them Correct. for others. Yes. yes. Excuse and, me. No, okay. no. And we'll find uh, we have six, seven different approval departments. So we um, we know that there are different uh, scenarios out there and we try to match the client with the best scenario. Okay. And sometimes it's a different uh, approval department. So that allows us to um, utilize resources that aren't available like at a big bank because they have one product or uh, one stream of products where we're able to fit. Um, we can form a box around the client instead of you coming into our box, right? Yeah. Um, and where we're also different is that we, we do the private money lending for, for investors looking for property that are uh, depreciate, you know, d- d- won't appreciate, so that it look, uh, so deteriorate, what, deteriorate. Excuse me. What? Okay, so so mm-hmm. the private money. I know that that's really where you're different. Is that mm-hmm. uh, always called a hard money loan? Is that what y'all call that? Um, it, well, the the difference is is that private money for us, it's we're private money. There's hard money out there, right? Um, and it's all about the asset, but. Private money is because we raise our own funds. We privately raise the funds. Yes. We don't have to deal with a line of credit or a hedge fund. So what that does, again, versatility, gives us more um, room. We get to make the rules, more room to move around. We can uh, fit, again, a client in around, um, excuse me, make a box around the client. No. Gotcha. Um, and so where hard money, there's overlays. There's fees and things yeah, like that. Ex- that are about- this has come up more mm-hmm. than once on the awesome. show here. Um, what? Why is it called hard money? Can you explain like what hard mm-hmm. money is versus private money? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, private money. Think of peer to peer, private. Okay. Yeah. Hard money is a. It's still a hard asset, and that's really where the origination came from. The originating of the of the name, because the property is the asset. Sure. Now, it's come as it's evolved. It's come to peer-to-peer, which is private, uh-huh. and then there's hard, which is dealing with the bank or dealing with a line of credit or a hedge fund. Okay. Um, so that's really the big difference. So it's not hard as in like it's difficult, oh. it's not like <laughs> no. you've done something right. wrong, That's great. No. none of that, it's no. just that it's dealing with a hard asset. Absolutely, absolutely. Got and, it. Um, and the big difference, of course, is that uh, you, you know there's a um, peer-to-peer. And that's yeah. the hard as, as a bank. So y'all, even though you might get kind of associated with the hard money crowd, because mm-hmm. that's what a lot of flippers or wholesalers utilize, would you consider it just to be private money as opposed to hard money? Absolutely. And um, and that's okay to be associated with that, because once we talk to them, we can explain the difference and, and let them know that, yeah, I mean, because there's a lot of uh, hard money lenders out there. We're actually, lenders in general, we're, we're a dime a dozen. And so being able to be different, and that's really where we can use the utilize that um, that yeah. private peer to peer funding. Well, I have in the past described y'all as a hard money lender. It's okay, and I'm sure I will in the future. <laughs> it's okay. uh, but it's I okay. but I wanted to be sure that I was that I was doing that the right way. And, and it's just because we raise our own funds, and then we turn around and sell the notes, and so that's another st- stream of our business or stem um, brands yeah. of our business that that um, it's really really for the passive um, investor. It's mm-hmm. a really a great tool to uh, utilize. Yeah, sure. You bet. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, someone that doesn't want to be out there flipping houses, but they like being involved in that industry, they can say, hey, Gabe, you know, here's some cash. I'd love for you to lend it for me. It's smart, secure, and it's safe. Yeah. Uh, We do all the underwriting. We do all the servicing. Yeah. Um, And so it's really, it's it's streamlined. You know, we're going to take care of it. Um, The the golden rule, Paul always says, the golden rule is that it's not what you do with my money. It's not get my money back. Right. And so, <laughs> um, good point. Yeah. So making sure that the money is back and that's the smart, safe, secure part of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I like it. I yeah. like it. So, okay. So let's say that, uh, someone out, I mean, we've, we've talked about how to buy properties here before we have, I, I talk to people about that all the time, mm-hmm. but you know, something that comes up a lot is, Hey, I want to flip a house. Yeah. Um, especially with, you know, what's going on in the world right now. Sure. There are a lot of people that think foreclosures might tick up. And even if it's not necessarily that a house has gone all the way to foreclosure, there just might be buying opportunities. There is no question with that, with the forbearance that is, mm-hmm. that is in play. Um, now, uh, a lot of our clients or a lot of prospective clients have looked into this, the forbearance situation, and it's a challenge. Now they've, re- um, on the conventional side, they've kind of toned down the, the um, overlays or um, associated with the forbearance, but it's still, it's still critical because you want to make sure that if they're just, if it's, uh, let's say it's a June, July, August, payment that you're, you're skipping, yeah. come September 1, you're not going to pay September 1. You're paying June, July, and August, August and September. There it is. And so that's going to create, if you couldn't pay the three months prior, there's a challenge there. There could be a challenge there. Was, the forbearance agreement, <clears throat> excuse me, It that's a tough one. You know, deferral is, hey, we can fix this problem. But if you've got someone who was unable to pay because they were out of work, 
how in the world is it that they suddenly made up three months of income and, and are able to pay that all of a sudden in September? You, you know, it's a, a, we, we've made many posts and, 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 and yelled from the hilltops that it's, if you can afford to pay your note, just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Whether yeah. times are tough or not, just keep paying because it also could, um, it also could look um, negative on your credit, negatively on your credit, uh, because it shows mm-hmm. us, um, you just really want to read the fine print. And that's really yeah. all I'm saying. And sometimes you can stack it on the back end. Well, that if you're changing the terms of the loan, then it you know it may consider it a refinance and it changes the whole dynamic. But um, it just read the fine print, make sure you really know what you're getting into. That's all I can say. That makes sense. I mean, that's good advice. So, <laughs> so let's say that someone, uh did the did the forbearance agreement mm-hmm. and and uh, well, we don't need to hypothesize about that. There are people who are not going to be able to, to repay, and yes. whether or not they can then get into an agreement with their lender to make mm-hmm. things right or not, who knows? But houses, properties that are 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 available, they've been available. You guys mm-hmm. are in business because people want to buy properties, whether right. it's private money or, or conventional lending, and and there's there's going to be at least as much of that for the foreseeable future due to financial disrupt that's going on. Correct. So if I'm an investor and I identify a house that I want to purchase, whether I'm just going to flip it mm-hmm. or I'm going to flip and hold, mm-hmm. uh, that would be my mo would be would hold, be buy right. and hold. Right. Um, but you know it's, it's different different things for everybody. So what do you what do you do for me? I mean, I call up Gabe and I say, Gabe, man, I found this house. It's perfect. I'm gonna I want to buy it. I need to talk to you about it. <clears throat> Help me out. I mean, sure, sure. So what do you, what, what do you have to offer me, and mm-hmm. how are we going to make this happen? Well, first of all, my, my questions start with where's the property? Okay. How much are you, you getting it for? Uh-huh. What is the as-is value? Okay. And then what do you – repairs. We can dive into all this as I work through this. But. And, and I do want to work through this. So let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. What would be – who would be deter- – let's say that let's, – let's, let's make it more real here. Let's yeah. say that I want to do private money. Like mm-hmm. let's say I've got a house that we're going to buy mm-hmm. for – Two hundred thousand okay. dollars. I'm gonna fix it up for fifty thousand um, dollars, and I want to sell it for like three fifteen or, or or something like that. Three twenty. Okay. I don't know. Like, let's just these. We have to have numbers. So for whether sure. the, not these make sense, I don't know. Well, no, that's that's a good scenario. Okay. Yeah. So so I come to you and I say, Gabe, um, I have. Um, you're probably got to tell me how much money I'm going to need, or maybe I come to you and say I can afford the repairs, but I can't buy the house. Like, how do you how do you decide how much you'll give me, and and, and so on and so forth? Um, it's off of what's great about private money compared to a conventional loan is uh, that it's off of the ARV and not off of um, the you know twenty percent down on the purchase price, right? Yeah. So now you're able to utilize some of that um, some of that equity. To interject, ARV is after oh, repair sorry, value. Oh, sorry, after repair value. You no, know, yeah. that's that's great. Yeah. And I was, My yeah. dad used to always get so mad at me for using acronyms <laughs> that not everybody would know. Sorry. And I was saying that to somebody yesterday. I was talking to this guy, and I, I was I said CRM. I was like, you know, that's a customer or client relationship manager, mm-hmm. and he rolled his eyes. And I was like, not everybody knows that. <laughs> no, stuff, and you know, and I'm. I'm uh, Morgan, you may not be the first time today that you're gonna have to do that. For no, me. LT. Okay. I said yeah. LTV, loan to value earlier. You know, I'm so. I pro- get apologize. In their, they get buried in what they do, and you know it, it happens, man. It makes it makes it's it's okay. So I'll try to be the referee on us using. Uh, you Bear know, with me, Facebook world. Thank yeah, you. yeah. There we go. We'll stay on top of it though. So okay. So anyway, you're gonna go off the uh, ARV, mm-hmm. um, and do y'all have a? LTV, a loan to value uh, overlay on the ARV, or or how does it work? Well, no, it's going to be as simple as let's really look at at the at the purchase. What you're getting it for? First step is what are you getting it for, mm-hmm. and what is the as is value? Okay, that's a huge part of it because um, if you're buying it, let's just use a, a scenario with you're buying it for a hundred and it's um, but it comes in as is at ninety. Yeah. So you're already 10 in the hole. Yeah. Right. So we want to make sure that you're getting uh, what you're getting, right? A lot of it has to do with location. Where mm-hmm. is the property? Okay. Right. So those aspects go into a lot of it when we were dealing with the property side of it. And um, and what you want to do is then move, you know, to the bar. Or actually, we want to actually really utilize um, and really go over the rehab. That 50000 you mentioned on that $200,000 purchase. Yes. What is in that fifty thousand? Okay, you know, what, is that really going to reach it to that three fifteen? Mm-hmm. Um, you know how how realistic is it to have it done? So do y'all gonna... counsel people on that, or do you well, expect yeah. them to have every single answer? Both. Okay, <laughs> you know it's a two way street, right? Yeah, uh, you know our our um our veteran or experienced investors have all that 
how about that in line, right? Yeah. And, and we have tools on our website that will help you analyze stuff like that, as in on a, on a smaller level, nothing like what, what you have. But, okay. you know, on a much smaller, um, you know, uh, hey, I'm standing in front of this property, this is what I think. Yeah. And then it can tell you exactly what, um, exactly, specific, you know, roughly what you can expect to pay at closing. Do you hire an appraiser to determine the ARV? What we do, um, and that's a great question, um, but we don't, Blink Lending doesn't, we don't, we have appraisal waiver. So what we like to do is is, is try to agree on the comps. We're going to a- analyze the comps that you give us, the comparables, excuse okay. me. Comparables. Yep. No, that's okay. Right. okay. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Had someone asked me that one a couple of weeks ago too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to be sure that we're on, yeah. you know, right. So um, the comps, and then we're going to run our own comps. Okay. And we're going to um, just reconcile them. Yeah. Make sure that we're looking at the same just make know, sure that apples the, to apples comparison, right? Me, I'm the investor in this scenario that I didn't just cherry pick the ones that Correct. happened to be these anomalies. 18 months ago, yes. six weeks ago. Yes. Oh, these are the ones that created. Understood. Uh, taking into consideration also that of uh, the rehab. What is the rehab? Is it going to get it to there? Like these houses that we're looking at that sold for 315 in this scenario. Yeah. Um, was that 50000 enough to get 200 to 315. Sure, sure. And, a, a, and it's a science, I'm not say it's science, it's more of a, a, we really just look into it because of experience. It we, is experience, yeah. And that's where uh, utilizing a tool like private money, because if the deal's good, a private lender or a hard money lender is going to lend on it. You know, it, it, it reminds me of sometimes when in the commercial real, I mean, in any world, but commercial real estate loans are, 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 are primarily investment oriented. Right. Um, and even though some of the things that they request of you are challenging and frustrating, I sometimes take solace in that they are probably going to keep you from making a horrible decision. And that's it. It's protection. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like... Um, it's kind of like, you know, paying taxes. I mean, the road that I drove on to get from my house to the office this morning was paid in part by some, well, paid for by some taxes that I pay, whether it's property tax or whatever else. I couldn't drive on the road if I didn't pay taxes. Well, <laughs> if, if we didn't have lenders to be hard on us and appraise things and ask us about the, 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 um, the, the debt service coverage ratio and all this other stuff, there then we might get into a bad situation. And that's, I'm glad you mentioned that. That is really the honus of what we try to do is we don't, if we're not going to lend on it, mostly it's a bad, it's, it's a probably bad. a bad deal. You want to make the loan, right? I mean, yeah. I'm here. you want to make it's the loan. Ca- we're a, uh, um, excuse this pun, but we are not pun, but this a quote unquote, we're all greedy capitalists, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> right. and what we're trying to do though is, is not, is be smart and, mm-hmm. and not, uh, we don't also uh, put you in a bad position or a uh, investor in a bad position because it's going to end bad. That and makes sense. And just experience has done that. Now, of course, that varies between experience levels of the investor as well. So, um, but no, it's it's about protecting what you know the protection. You know, you don't want to. You're utilizing the money you have or leveraging the money you have, typically in most scenarios, um, to borrow. Yep. But you're also signing a personal guarantee. So there are you know, and there are there's repercussions if it, things go wrong. Of course. What's your exit strategy? Is it, are we going to be able to get you out of this short-term private money loan? Yes. Right? So there's a few more questions on a buy and hold scenario, like you mentioned a, a so, minute ago. Okay. So and I do want to get into I do want to get into the you know the the, the hold scenario, but sure. but let's keep going down the buy sure. path. Mm-hmm. So let's say that Morgan's math checks out and and he mm-hmm. can purchase this home for two hundred. He can put fifty into it and it will have an ARV of three fifteen. Okay. What what do I need to bring to the table at this point? Well, uh, you can do, there's a co- couple different routes, right? So there's um, 70% of the ARV is, is typically across the industry. Now they'll go up sometimes to 75% okay. of ARV. The way Blink works is that it's um, it's 70%. And if you've done multiple deals with us and the, and the deal works, we can do 75%. Okay. But we ask for the first couple of rounds, first couple of deals that we do bring skin to the game. We'd so even it so so just just to clarify that one, let's say that seventy percent would cover my purchase, my closing costs, my loan fees, and my rehab. You'd still say no, right? You got to have some skin in the game. Now there are clients that we have that we will cover one hundred percent, sure, and then just bring closing costs, sure. Um, now, uh, but typically it's it's ninety percent, and we'll, the whole thing, the whole we dwell in choices, right? This yeah. is our company, one of our company mottos, and so options are key. You want to bring a li- if you have money. If you're good credit, good income, good assets, mm-hmm. you're a really good fit. What that means is that you want to bring a little bit more money, pay a little bit less interest, 
mm-hmm. and um, know that that's going to equity. It's not coming to the lender's pocket, right? It's going to equity. You're able to get better terms. Okay. Now, if you want, if it's better that you need, you need more covered, ninety percent of cost. Uh huh. You know that you know. So in this scenario, you're in at 250, 25 grand, or twenty five thousand plus closing costs. Uh huh. If you if that if that's a scenario you want, then the, the interest rate's going to change. Rates are going to change. Now after three deals for, with us, it changed. You you got a different. Yeah. yeah. We, we can we can. So if someone comes to you and has good credit, mm-hmm. um, but not much cash, you will figure out how to how to get them in the deal with a, a minimal amount of cash, but it's not no cash. I mean, they're going to need cash to come to you for the first few deals. It, they are. And yeah. then we always have options. Again, it's about options with yeah. us. Uh, um, and I keep harping on uh, us, but it, it, in the industry, it should be that way. Yeah. Um, there are, I have private money lenders or I have uh, other investors that are willing to Hey, you have good credit. You um, is maybe going 50 50 partnering with someone. Okay. So there's always an opportunity to, and vice versa. If you have a little cash, but not such great credit, uh huh. We can always, always work out a partnership. You can find uh, a way. Find a way. That makes, right. That's good. That's good. Deal, and it's all about the deal being good. The yeah. deal's 80%, 77%. Well, maybe not. You know, maybe let's like, keep looking. Right. And right. That, that would be my advice is sometimes, you know, maybe we're not the best fit for you. Well, hey, look, if it's already a scenario where the person doesn't have the credit or the capital and then there's a partnership opportunity, but y'all turn down the partnership opportunity. I mean, at some point you need to listen to the writing or read the writing on the wall as the flipper or the investor and say, look, we, we, we got to find another deal. Some Sometimes people are so eager to jump in. I know and that's the biggest one, especially the first one. Mm-hmm. A lot, lot, 90% of, the, of everybody out there is just on the education level and they will... The biggest, hardest one is that first jump. Of course. And they want to make that first jump, right? And they're aggressive. But you want to make sure it's a good deal. Yeah. And I can't I can't harp on that enough. The, the deal really will sell. Yeah. That uh, makes sense. That makes me, sense. Whomever lending will will lend on it if it's a good deal. If it's a good we'll deal. We'll make we'll find a way. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that and that's smart. I mean, you need to, as an investor, you know, you need to take all the emotion out, whether it's even if it's even if it's just that I want to do my first deal so badly, um, or it's or it's I've been looking at fifty houses and none of them work, so the fifty first house that comes along, I'm just going to make it work. Um, you got to get rid of that stuff or of that mindset, and you got to know that that hey, we're only going to do deals that actually make sense. And that's it. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's a- that's what's great about private money is it's lending. Um, it's common sense lending mm-hmm. on all aspects, right? Mm-hmm. Credit, income, assets, equity. Um, experience well, and your um, investors or your private money partners. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you call them. I mean, they're relying on y'all to right. to make good decisions on behalf of them. That's what makes the notes so desirable. Yeah, is that uh, we are uh, we have a little high we, not little we have a higher level of qualification. Yeah, good credit, good income, good assets. You're a good fit. I makes mean, that's sense. Kind of, you know, uh, that doesn't mean that no for everybody else. It just means that that's really our our our, our niche. Yeah. Um, because we create the note, and then when we go to sell that note, lots of times it's already sold because our lenders have already been through the process. Yeah. Um, and you know they're making seven, eight, nine percent return. Yep. Um, they're loving it because makes- it's secure. We we pay we pay the uh, <laughs> we pay the lender before we actually get the money from the uh, borrower. Wow. Um, so it's a, uh, we keep everything in a fine, fine so, tooth. So on a hard money loan, do you, do mm-hmm. you accumulate the interest? Uh, do you, do you receive payments on a regular, uh, on a monthly basis? It's monthly interest only payments. Okay. Okay. So there are monthly interest only payments and those go to the lender. You receive yeah. those, you pay the lender. Um, and that's what you're talking about. You pay the lender before you get the money. Cor- you're paying them those payments. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So let's say we've bought this house. We fixed it up. Life is good. Um, oh, can you speak to the fees on, on, on the hard money loans? Is that something you want to, that you can get into? No, and absolutely. Um, I have no, no problem doing, we're, uh, we've, pride ourselves and we're known as the junk free lenders what that means right um there are a multitude of uh, different um questions that need to be asked but a lot of it has to do with prepayment penalty uh, all those fees that go into after the loan is closed yeah we do not recognize we don't we don't do those um good so uh, up front we don't like i said appraisal waiver that's you know um a lot of 
uh, a lot of the industry wide will want an appraisal uh-huh. right? for for good good sense. We just don't we just we rather have the comps, the comparables, yeah, and, and reconcile it that way. We just don't believe in it. Well, the way that a, a, a conventional appraiser that is doing their job is not going to be able to provide you with the after repair value the way y'all are looking for it. Correct. It's more of an as is. That's right. But That's yeah. So I feel like they would be going against their 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 industry standards by telling you, yeah, if y'all do all this stuff, then I can sign a piece of paper that states it'd be worth x amount of money i mean that's what landed us in the savings and in, in the um yes whatever they not the savings and loan crisis but the no, subprime lending meltdown in the you know mm-hmm. uh 08 09 no no and you're exactly right so um you know there's and there's multitude of other fees that go into it and understanding the drop all these are fees associated with it after the after the fact but no we're more of um we have a flat underwriting fee. Okay. And then origination. Okay. So y'all show y'all charge a couple y'all charge a percentage of the loan as an origination fee. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. then you charge uh, interest only on the on the loan that's been lent. Correct. And then um and you're saying that that's that's paid monthly by the by the borrower. Yes. And okay, so let's say we've done all that. I've owned this thing for four months now. I have fixed everything up. Mm-hmm. Um, I go to sell it, and and, and that's great. I pay you the. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan or two hundred and twenty thousand dollar loan back. I take my hundred thousand dollars of of mm-hmm. profit minus whatever I cash I had in the game, and that was a great deal. And awesome, glad to know you. High five. Let's do it. Again. Yeah, repeat. exactly. Let's there you repeat. go. Let's do it again. But then there's the 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 what I would be more interested in doing, which would be let's do a cash out refi at a mm-hmm. seventy five loan to seventy five percent LTV mm-hmm. loan to value, mm-hmm. and let's see what the least amount of money that I can have in this property is and own it forever. Right. Very valid. It comes up all the time. Um, and uh, qualifying for a conventional loan is really the best scenario there. You say cash out. You're um, at four months. That's a little bit of a challenge. We either need to wait six months. Well, you have to wait six months to do a cash out. Okay. That's good to know. Yep. So uh, uh, up to six months, we can do what is a rate term refinance. Okay. So you're just refinancing the first lien. Got it. So you're just paying back the hard private money loan. Okay. And you're able to roll in the costs of the new closing okay. into that loan. So essentially, you're getting your money back minus the original closing costs. And, 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 in the, and then in this scenario, you're just saying that you would pay back this private money lender mm-hmm. his his hard money loan. We got I've got to put this in a bucket, so let's call sure. it a hard money loan to yep. purchase it. For sure. But would it be the same private money avenue that we would take for this permanent loan, or would we go conventional? You could go conventional, and that's the cheap... That is the the, the most least expensive way to do it. Okay. It's conventional. Now there are other opportunities out there. Okay. Um, so, uh, non-conventional is an option. Okay. Right? Which is goes off of. Um, you don't hear me get, get into a little rabbit hole. So uh, <laughs> when you do a conventional loan, it's very debt to income rate um, ratio driven. Debt to income on the on the borrower. On the borrower, right? So okay. it's debts versus their uh, liabilities. Yes. Okay. So it's. It's uh, compared to all the real estate they own as well. Mm-hmm. So it's very red uh, red tape. It's yeah. government backed. Oh yeah, loan, right. So there's we're talking. Um, we need tax returns. We need pay stubs. We need. Uh huh. Oh, and if you're self-employed like me, you're a scumbag. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. Well, it know. just depends on your write-offs. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. I'm I'm self-employed as well. Categorize as self-employed as well. And and yeah. as long as you don't. Uh, See, I like to take advantage of my God-given right for write-offs, mm-hmm. and that's what we call it. So there when you you're <laughs> when you're uh, in that in that industry, that's what you're doing. You're you're able, you're, bl- you're covering, you're blanketing, you're umbrelling your right. income. Right. Um, but to to stay on that same path is uh, there's also there's also the option to go to a local bank, right? Yes. Maybe not blink lending. Yes. Um, you know your your mom and pop banks mm-hmm. because they're a little they're lending their own money. So the issues that I have ever seen there, though, is that their interest rate's going to be considerably higher than conventional. Yes. You'd have to beg, borrow, and steal and twist arms to get a 10-year term, let alone yeah. a fully amortized loan. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. The, the, the term then is going to be, they're going to feel like they've given you the largest gift on planet Earth for a 20-year term. And if you can get a 25-year amortization, or 20-year amortization, if you can get 25, they've moved mountains for you. Uh, yeah, and you need to let me know where those are because yeah. I would love to be able to refer some people. <laughs> I, I mean, we, we, we twist some arms sometimes. Yeah. I've never pulled it off with a local bank for right. a house. But um, 
you know, so what what I see when I'm looking for deals that cash flow, you need a 30 year amortization. Correct. You need, I mean, maybe you're you're willing to do a 10 year term, but I can't have something where it's you know three or five years, and then I'm stuck having to figure out what to do with it in three or five years. It's more about what 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 is your strategy? Yeah. Uh, also, because there are products that will 30 year amortize. Now, is are you interest rate driven? Because that's a huge. So I would say I'm not or monthly note driven. I would say I would say it's probably monthly. I'm just worried about cash flow. So it, it doesn't really matter if in in most of these scenarios what portion of my payment went to principal and what portion went to interest, as long as the economics of the deal worked out. Just like you wouldn't do a deal if the economics didn't work course, out. Course. I wouldn't do a deal if for whatever reason I was paying interest only and 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 it consumed what I expected right. to be a principal and interest amortizing loan. So my internal rate of return is no good on a deal anymore. For sure. And and you got to keep in mind are you also playing the appreciation game? Right. You know, so right. keep both of those factors in, in mind. And, and how long are you going to keep the home? Um, is this a 10 year and then sell? Sorry about that. Beef. Oh, you're this good. Thing's, uh, I got a silence. Yeah, I didn't realize. <laughs> uh, hold on. I'm going to silence this. What's, what's great about being live? Yeah, right. This UPS is mad because I've got it overloaded. So anyway, that's we're okay. Funny. No, it's, it's such heavy content. Is yeah, that what it is? That's right. It, it can't handle our conversation. <laughs> it's trying to process it. Too much power. Oh, good times. Um. So so basically, you, you flexibility. Like, like let's say the moral of the story is flexibility. Correct. Which is which is important. But I want to get back to the nuts and bolts of it. So yeah. I did this deal with you. Mm -hmm. um, let, let's okay. So what would be? I'm got, got my calculator here. So if we were going to do three fifteen, I'm a first time. Um, I'm a first time borrower. Seventy percent. Point seven. Mm -hmm. Three fifteen. Mm -hmm. Times not divided by uh, two hundred and twenty thousand five hundred dollars, but in this scenario, boy, I had to put thirty k into this because I was buying it for mm -hmm. two hundred. I put fifty into it. Let's excuse closing costs and origination and, and, and interest. Let's just let's just round it to thirty k. You're bringing thirty plus closing costs to the table. Okay, so so um, I got to bring thirty plus closing costs to the table because this house. Uh, we went conventional, I think, in this scenario, and we actually got an appraisal, right? Oh uh, no, this was the heart. Uh in the, in the refi, in uh, the refi, okay, in the refinance, in right. the refinance. So in the refinance, though, we can do a seventy-five LTV at six months, depending on your credit. Depending yes. on my credit. Mm -hmm. So three fifteen times seventy-five is two thirty-six. So now I'm only bringing twenty-four to the table. Right, you're in twenty. Yeah, no, fourteen. Have, excuse me. You have to pay back the original. I was loan. in it for two fifty. I got to pay back the original two hundred and twenty thousand dollar loan. Right. But I'm getting a new two hundred and thirty-six thousand dollar loan. Consider closing costs are rolled in. There. You need to, you know, put yeah. those in as well. So you have to bring some money to close. To me, this, to me, we need to kind of keep looking for a better deal. You don't like this one because there's too much cash. In well, it. It depends yeah. on. I mean, you have a lot of cash, and this is a wonderful area. Is this in the Woodlands, or is this in Cleveland, Texas, or is this in? Understood. That's this is where that comes into play. Understood. Now you're buying and holding. Are you keeping this for 15 years? Yeah. Whole different train of thought. So my my game would be. Um, and, and I guess as an aside, we were talking about Rentalizer earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. that's where like our software comes in because yep. it is absolutely brain damage to manually analyze these houses one after one after one. And with Rentalizer, it can do it so quickly and rapidly. Yep. You can be like, no, nah, that's no good. Let's move on. No, mm -hmm. that's no good. Let's. It even causes me to be less married to deals mm -hmm. because I can just like toss them to the side more quickly. Right, um, and we can look at that in a minute. But but let's let's flip it let's flip it around to a house that um, let's just say that in in theory I was still only able to borrow um, two twenty from you to mm -hmm. buy the thing, mm -hmm. but it was going to appraise for like four hundred, mm -hmm. and which means that at a seventy five percent loan to value conventional loan here after six months because you said it's got to be six months, right. I can now do a. Um, Three hundred thousand dollar new loan. Yes, get so, cash. So let's say that I owe you two twenty. My new loan is going to cost me ten k. That's two thirty. I'm actually going to not only own this house, but I'm going to put seventy k in my pocket. Correct. Do you do that very often? Yes, we do. Um, now again, the key is how long you've had it. Six months is is the key. That's when we can start talking about the cash out refinance situation. Right okay. now, um, now the interest rate is going to uh, vary. Right, so where you're, if it's a rate term refinance on an investment property, mm -hmm. you're going to be in the in the high fours, low fives. You start okay. to do a rate um, cash out refinance. Yes, the same scenario. Uh huh. It's going to go five and a half. 
high five. So, so you got to keep that in mind. So one thing is, but again, we're not interest uh, interest rate. Um, worried at this point, you're getting right. cash we're to getting reinvest cash out because we want to do another deal, and then you're and then you got to rent her in there, make uh, paying the mortgage. But also, I would say that a lot of people would be completely happy owning houses with no cash in them, for sure. So I mean, we don't have sign to do me up. cash out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can just do a re, what you said, a rate term right. refi on right. whatever you'll do loan costs. That's not considered cash out, right? Correct. Yes. So loan up to seventy five percent. Up so seventy five LTV. Of the of the total loan to value loan to value of the total deal. That's right. <laughs> right. Up to a seventy five loan to value seventy five percent loan to value. Yeah. You will include fees. I just can't walk out with cash in my hand. Correct. And so you know, so if we talk about hunting down deals, we're hunting for deals where where if, if I'm a buy and hold kind of a guy, mm -hmm. I want to purchase it from a wholesaler. Mm -hmm. At the right price, I want to do the repairs that are going to get me the highest ARV. Right, and I want to then wait six months. And by the way, six months is a, a term you would offer, right, as a hard money loan, as a private loan. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's not like I'm, I'm, I, I, I can only get your money for four months, and I got to bridge some gap here. I mean, how long will you do a, a private hard money loan? Oh no, that's a um, super great question. Uh, six months is standard. Okay. Communicate what, how long we can also look. Is this a big project you're gonna have to undertake? Um, we offer inside of the loan two free extensions. So oh, nice. That goes into the no junk fees, right? Yeah. So if that's equals out to seven months or eight months, then you're gonna be okay. Don't worry about it. Now make sure you pay your pay on time. Make sure you communicate if we have questions. Make sure your your um, uh, rehab budget, um, your uh, draws are done correctly. Okay. Um, but all that stuff is, is, is all, uh, it's a relationship building. Now, if you think it's going to be nine, why don't we just set it up for nine months? Yeah. There's no, it, it doesn't change anything. Especially if I communicated to you up front, I said, Hey, look, is. Gabe, man, I'm going to buy this thing. We're going to fix it up, but I'm hunting for a renter. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm obviously going to probably lose a little money on paying my hard money loan while they're renting it for a few right. months. Right. But month six, I mean, I'm calling you on day 181 mm -hmm. to do, to do a refi on this thing with a conventional loan. And we would start the, start the refi. We just don't want the appraisal to go out. So we would start that. We could start. Well, now there's scenarios. If it's conventional, it's okay. When you start to deal with some of the non-conventional products, they like to six months from when we submit the loan. But that doesn't. I mean, I went off okay. on a tangent there. Sorry, okay. So, so yeah. there's some stuff we could get down in the weeds. Right. On. But yeah. Again, and I didn't mean to, if we though. told you what the, you could help with the strategy up front. No question. You could say, well, Morgan, you you need to prepare that we can't even submit the loan till the thing is leased out, and then six months after it's leased out. So we need to be sure you're ready for nine months of payments on this thing. Whatever. Right. We can make a strategy up front. And then, um, so the good news is, hey, you do have a way to lend the private slash hard money all the way up till the refi. Correct. As long as it happens within a reasonable amount of time. There it is. And uh, there are some overlays with still lingering around from, from what we didn't want to talk about with co from the COVID. Yeah. Uh, COVID-19. So uh, there are some scenarios where some of the uh, approval departments will utilize the rental income. Okay. At, you know, to offset your debt to income. Okay. Some will use 80%. It depends on your reserves. You mean that they'll actually overlay the value of the rental income to say, hey, we're, we're going to give you, we're going to do a higher vacancy factor than normal. There it is. Interesting. Yeah. So, okay. um, so it's because they're concerned about the renter losing, losing their job. Their job. And, and then, so if you have six months, a year's worth of reserves, you're going to be fine. They'll, for that specific property or for all of your debts? Um, well, all, yes, all the uh, all your uh, real estate owned, all your real estate. Yeah, you, they want to make sure that, that, that when it comes to debt to income, they're gonna yeah. they're gonna. Re that's what I'm saying. That conventional product is going to be very uh, red tape driven, very yeah. government backed. I mean, it's so you oops. you can be a bridge though if someone is not a candidate for conventional. Mm -hmm. um, you can be a bridge to get them to that to that local bank, local lender who can be there, I can provide a 15, 20, 25 year amortization on a five year term type product to enable a person like me. Maybe I'm not gonna hold this for the rest of my life, but if I say, Gabe, look, man, I can buy this thing, right? I don't think we're in the right real estate cycle to sell it as a flip. Yep. I wanna rent it out for three or four years. And then when we get to a different point in the real estate cycle, I wanna sell it. You've got it figured out. I mean, that's exactly correct. Now there are non-conventional products that we offer that are coming back before, April, um, we had quite a few in the pipeline to uh, on the non-conventional side, which goes off of debt to service coverage ratio, uh -huh. which is simply um, the home that you own uh -huh. has, uh, it, it's a business, right? Yes. So P-I-T-I-A, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, HOA, if it's applicable, right? Okay. That goes into the cost that it takes to run the home. Yep. 
adversely against the rent that is being received from it. So yes. let's say it's $1,000 and 1300 in rent. That's okay. a one to three debt to service coverage ratio, DSCR. Yes. And gotcha. that, that, along with a credit score, you could get a non-conventional product. That's it. So if you had a 1.3 debt well, service Well, there's also le- different yeah. levels. You can do yeah. even, even, even 80. The, you know, so you're saying your banks are going to look at the debt service coverage ratio and say, okay, yes, well, we, would, we would be interested in this at that, but not if it was just just scraping by right well there are well we had approval departments in hand that would do 0.8 which is is actually losing the other way around you have to to feed that every month right now that is a little bit high it's a 30-year amortized product so it's a little different right now you're speaking Uh, my language right but it's you know when you start to dip into that under one you're in the high sevens you know what's funny though is i'm willing to feed it for a few couple years to get that 30-year amortization because it, it as the as the rental rate starts to lift off a little bit, mm-hmm. it just becomes a beautiful thing. Right, and and guess what, um, Morgan? It's about location. Yeah, then they could be. I mean, that area could be popping, and that's where you want to be, right? And yeah. you don't want you don't care. I'm losing two hundred bucks a month. I don't care. Uh, I'm in at two hundred, and right. in five years from now, I can sell it for three three fifty. I think it's. I know a, it's crazy, it, but it you happens. have to you have to get your head around it a little bit yep. because a lot of people are like, wait a second, you already put fifty k into that. Why in the world are you setting yourself up to lose two hundred bucks a month? And I would say, okay, well, would you rather a scenario where we just put 65K in it and break even? I mean, it, 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 the timing of the money is measurable. There's a time value of the money, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you are you didn't know how much we ultimately had to put in this thing to start with, right. and you don't know what the end game is. And I think it's funny when some people are like, oh, this is a terrible investment. It's only going to break even. And I would say, well, I think there's another way to run the numbers mm-hmm. where we could figure out, are we going to get a considerably higher internal rate of return because this thing's in a happen in area, like you said. Glass is half full. Yeah, exactly. I mentioned that in the, uh, in the, in the setup. So um, it, it's it, that's it. Where's your perspective? And yeah. it's, what, what's your end game too? I mean, it's your exit strategy. Is this, are you keeping it for five? They have five-year um, arms inside of that. Those thir- amortized for 30, five, three, five, 10, seven, you know, all those different arms inside of that. Now, it's fixed for that amount of time, but it drops the rate down. So yeah. at that point, you can refinance it or sell it, but you're gotcha. still in that same ballpark of amortized over 30. So there are options out there. It's more about, then uh, that's what it's really all about is options. Yeah. Dwell in the, in the op, you know, dwell in the choices. That makes sense. Can we, uh, can I fire up Rentalizer and we try to do a hypothetical analysis here? I'll do my best. So no, I want to give this, this is, a try here. So we're this gonna... is next level stuff. <laughs> this is, this is where, um, we're going to go next level here. So, Algebra meets it's right. You know, technology. So I'm going to go to our flip module here, which is a, which is a pretty cool function in in Rentalizer, and we're going to do a hypothetical we're going to do a hypothetical flip. Okay. So I always type in I usually use where I where I the house I grew up in in Houston. <laughs> uh, I like to type this one in. Um, and it was a three bedroom, two bath, two car garage. I don't know how many square feet it is now. It's been rehabbed a little bit, but let's say it's a uh, 2,250 square feet on a uh, 8,000 square foot lot. And I'm not going to use real numbers because it, it wouldn't make sense. Well, it's your per, it's your traditional uh, Houston it, home. It is a traditional it, Houston your home. Branch yeah. style, I'm assuming. Exactly. I don't, yeah, it's over in Briarcroft. Um, yep. And uh, but they're they're they're. This one hasn't been torn down, but houses on that street have been torn down because right. there there can be some pretty legit houses so in there. Property value there is 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 for sure there. Right. So let's just say that we could buy this thing for three fifty. We've got fifteen hundred dollars in closing costs. That's just you know your ordinary escrow fees, survey title, whatever. I'm gonna say this is gonna be a a, a nice house. So we're gonna sell this thing for six hundred thousand dollars. It would rent for forty two hundred. And we're going to spend um, $25 a square foot rehabbing it. It's got uh, $10,000 property tax, $2,500 property insurance, three fifty dollars HOA. So this is a cool thing that Rentalizer does where we try to include everything. And a lot of people will be like, dude, I'm buying a $350,000 house. Why do I care what the utilities are? And I'm like, well, it's an expense. <laughs> Let's track it. It's part of the business, right? <laughs> yeah. So we got $0.12 cents per square foot per month for utilities. It's going to take me four months till I lease it out. It's going to take me four months to sell it if I was going to flip it. And when I resell it, it's going to be 8% resale costs. We're going to go I have ahead. a quick question. Yeah. Um, everything looks really legitimate. I'm curious 
can you explain to everyone what how you got fifteen hundred dollars in closing costs? Yeah, good question. So, um, thank you for asking that. So, three hundred and fifty dollars, four hundred to four hundred and fifty dollars is kind of like an ordinary escrow fee that you're going to pay. And then, if you needed a survey, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to be several hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Four hundred. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to get up to eight hundred, nine hundred, you know, dollars right there. And then let's say that we needed to pay to you know record a document or prepare a document or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And we're flipping this. And w- what we're buying right now, we're just saying we're purchasing this house as a distressed asset. Okay. That's what I'm plugging in right now is this, maybe not okay. distressed, but it's it's not worth right. 600000 today. So title policy is not in there though. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying, hey man, if you're a flipper, you're definitely paying for that title policy. Correct. So that's uh, now, be, that's, now that could be negotiated on the sales course, contract. That's but... going to be twenty eight hundred bucks on a three hundred fifty thousand dollars house, isn't yes. it? So I think we should we should juice this up then to what do you think? Like four thousand um, dollars? Without origination, without any of this stuff, and you're going to go strictly keeping Lo- this loan fees are in a different bucket. Okay. Okay. Then yes. That, so this that would was... be title. That's a great thing for pointing out. Thank you. So let's call it four thousand with a title policy. Agreed. Okay, and That's and cool. blink lending, by the way, does require title policies on hard money loans. Most definitely. Okay, just wanted to. Okay, so then we're going to go to purchase method, and we can either do all cash, we can do cash purchase to a permanent loan, which mm-hmm. we probably should call it conventional, but it's conventional slash permanent. We can do hard money loan to permanent loan, or we wow. can do permanent. I want to do hard money to permanent. Let's sure. let's pull out all the let's stops. Fun. Um, so what's my loan going to cost me right now, Gabe? In in points? Um, you're well. <laughs> First, de- first deal. First deal. Let, well, just keep for the for the simplicity of the math. Let's just keep it at three. Keep it at three. Uh, there are op- there will be, there will be op- could be options. Okay. With less. And interest rate, you think? That's um that's on our high side. Okay. To us, uh, but I mean, if you want to keep since already, of course, you'll we'll have options alone. there. As okay. Well. So I'm saying, and I already had this in here, but it was not because of what you told me. I didn't know it had to be six months. I just I, hypothesized it would take six months. Right. So I'm saying six months mm-hmm. of hard money before my permanent loan begins. Okay. I'm saying that my permanent loan is going to have fees also. Yes. So we, uh, uh, so, so, and I put 1.5% of my permanent loan. You uh, think maybe a little more than that? And at the, I had said 3% on the hard, on the, uh, correct. Uh, oh, um, for X for loan costs, loan costs. So at three and it's, uh, you're, yeah, you're going to be about five to six grand to have it refinanced. Is that what? Is this what we're working on? Is yes. This, okay. Yeah. So, so we're looking at that. So, if we have an ARV of six hundred thousand, we right. do a seventy-five LTV. That would be four hundred and fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. One and a half percent of four hundred and fifty. Oh, this is the hard money. Lo- okay. No, this is the refinance. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes, you're gonna. Um, so you're at four. Would you say four twenty-five? So that's four. Yeah, you're about five, five to. Six. Five to seven grand. So let's leave it at one point five percent of the new loan. Perfect. Does that make that that'll work? I okay. Like it. And then interest rate right now on a new conventional loan, four and three quarters for for my refinance. I mean that's you got per string credit. You're probably going to be okay. You may have to pay a few point. I mean a little bit, but you might have to buy it down. A buy little it bit down a little saying. bit. Yeah, I mean five is a good number, but they, keep five. it there. Oh, hey, okay. we have we we got a keyboard. <laughs> there it is. There so it we're is. doing a thirty year term with yep. a seventy five percent loan to value. Let's Look, do we it. even spelled out loan to value. That is beautiful, beautiful work, guys. <laughs> All right, add custom listing, and here it is. So, um, wow. what? ignore this one item because I just noticed that that is not pulling the right thing. But what this is telling me is that here's our house. Uh, it's given us a couple of details, and we could adjust on the fly as we're talking, and that's part of the reason wow. I wanted to show you this. But we could adjust the purchase price, we can adjust the after repair value, and we can adjust the, the rental rate as we're talking. From a flip-only perspective, so we got a couple of different scenarios here, but from a flip-only perspective... If I was to buy this for three hundred and fifty grand, and spend fifty six thousand dollars rehabbing it, and have four thousand dollars in purchase closing costs, and then pay the twelve thousand dollar origination fee on the hard money loan, this is going to cost four hundred and twenty two thousand dollars to do this deal. Mm-hmm. Um, now I I need to edit this because right now I only have it set that we had to put up the closing costs and the loan fees. But Gabe is telling me, no, sir, we cannot give you all that. So I'm going to flip over here to edit details, and Gabe says that I have to put at least twenty five thousand dollars of cash into this deal. So now I'm going to come back over here, and I actually have to walk to the ta- walk to the closing table. I'm going to get a loan for three hundred twenty-five thousand, and I'm going to bring thirty-eight thousand seven forty to the table. Here's a question for you: If we agree up front that it's going to be a fifty-six thousand dollar rehab, hmm? 
Who holds on to that money? That's a wonderful question. That is <laughs> uh, immensely uh, great. Um, so it is, it's included in the loan, but it's held in what they call well, escrow. You're right? going to escrow that. Right. Correct. So I am going to bring 38740 to the table. Correct. And you'll still have full access to the 56000 Yeah. What's different about Blink is that we do not charge you interest day one on the undrawn rehab budget. Cool. Okay. So that 56000 day one hasn't been used, like a credit card. It has not been used right. yet. Now, as you use it, the principal grows Yes. through the draw process. We didn't really get into that too much, but yeah. through the draw process, and then your principal grows, and that's what accumulates the interest. Gotcha. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. But so that's let's, on a tangent there. I'm sorry. glad to know that. Okay. So now we've declared our, our after repair value is 600K. Mm-hmm. Uh, 8% of that is $48,000. So if we're paying the full brokerage fee plus buying a title policy for the purchaser and paying for everything, that's what that's going to run you. Uh, we have carrying costs here in a proposed month for sale. So if you come over here, we have net profit versus accumulated carrying costs. So we had we had said we were going to sell this at the end of month four. Mm-hmm. And what that says is, hey, look, it's going to be worth 600K. Uh, after you pay off this, this, this interest-only loan of 325, we then have 227. Uh, but we, we, we also, let's not kid ourselves, even though we're walking away with 227, 38,740 was money we brought to the closing table the right. first time. Right. And we had property tax, we had interest on our hard money loan, we had utilities, we had insurance in the amount of 17,742. So our profit on this deal is 170,518. Which is healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like a go. I'm, uh, yeah, we're all, I'm ready. Let's go find this. Right. So you had to put in 38. Is that what I'm reading? Yeah. So we had to put in $38,000. And you're going to profit? 170. Uh, twice on Sunday? Yeah. Every day, twice on Sunday? Yeah. Is that I what mean, we this do? This is, is that... obviously not happening. Right. But here's an interesting <laughs> thing, though, but I, that I think that a lot of people might not realize. If it wasn't all hunky-dory because um, you had planned month four, let's say, was in February or March and the world shut down for a few months and then you wound up owning this house all the way till month 12, your 170, even though that's a huge number and 135 is still a huge number, your 170 just turned into 135. Correct. Yeah. Because we have closing costs. We have carrying costs. That's it. So, you know, that is something that we try to, you know, bring to light here is, hey, look, you know, it's not like you're going to continue to make the same amount of money forever. And it's illustrated right there. That's what's the beauty of the. um, It is. It it brings it down for you. Yeah. And so also, let's just say that uh, we sold this house for five twenty five. Okay. It all just recalculated. Now in month four, I'm making 101, but in month 12, I'm making 66. And what I always like to do is think, well, what would happen if we got to the point that we only made $3,400 because we owned it a year? And let me ask you a question. What, when, when do you say, I loved everything about this, but it's too dangerous? Like you, you, you were going to assume that you were going to get your full price and never reduce it. But at the end of 12 months, you're losing money. I'm sorry. I can't lend this money to you because we need to assume that you can lose $20,000 and hold this thing for a full 12 months and still break even. I mean, you must have some math on that. Um, math, yes. But it's really days on market. Okay. How long is it? You know, What are the tr- tr- uh, trends in that area Yeah. C- versus what you've done on the rehab? Uh-huh. Is it, is it ready to pop? I mean, is it popping when you go and see it? Uh-huh. Um, that we take all that into consideration. Is that fifty six thousand that you're putting right? Fifty six thousand that you're putting into we the put property. We put thirty eight thousand. Oh, fifty six k in rehab. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. So now, how is that justifying the sale price? Now, when you start to get to those higher price points in the half million dollar yeah, range, this is obviously higher. Yeah, you're going to sit. It's going to sit for a minute. Of course, it is. Be prepared for that. So know, we have these carrying costs that are racking up. I mean, we started in month one with forty four hundred, but we found ourselves in month twelve with fifty five hundred dollars. Fifty. Right. Three hundred dollars, thousand dollars. It's yeah, it's a huge swing. Now after month twelve, maybe eight or nine, we start to think about, hey, let's um, let's refine it. Um, we already did the refinance, so you're putting this on the. We haven't done a refinance okay. yet, so so this is where we try to get out of the hard money loan. Let's do a, let's yeah. put a renter in there, and let's revisit this in a year. That makes so yeah. So well, okay. So here's here's the cool thing. We can go to step two here, yes. which is flip to rent. So in our the details that we outlined originally, we had said, hey, look, after month six. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to get a 75% loan-to-value conventional loan with a 30-year amortization yep. at 5% interest with 1.5% fees. Okay. So what I what I can see now is that we're going to get a new loan for $342,750. Yep. We're going to pay off our hard money loan of three twenty five. dollars 
we are going to have $5,100 of refinance fees, mm -hmm. but because I'm getting a $342,000 loan and I only have to pay three thirty dollars in fees and payoff, I'm actually walking out of this deal with $12,599 in my pocket. And there it is. Someone paid me to own this house. That all, <laughs> And that's what's great. It, it, but all this starts at the very, very beginning. Do yes. you qualify for this loan if something, plan B, plan C, your contingencies? Right. Please, guys, build contingency plans into your into your scenarios. But that is a contingency plan A or B, what this would be, because right. obviously you want to sell it. Right. B, let's just convert it over. Let's move forward. Um, rinse and repeat. Get your money back. Pay everybody off and let's let's do another one. See, and that's and that's what that's. I mean, obviously everybody wants to. They don't want to be married to these. They don't want to tie up their capital forever. That's they it. need capital. their tool. They need their capital. Yep. So that's why we need to partner with somebody like you because we want to use your capital. Yep. Because your your people that are investing with you are saying, I have too much capital. That's it. Loan it to somebody. There it is. And and somebody on the other side of the table saying, I need capital. <laughs> you know. So so then in the flip to rent rent scenario, I want to point something out. This this which is cool on our software. So it is now saying, hey, look, we are trying to paint a picture of your entire first year of ownership. So what we're saying is the first four months, because we said it was going to take four months to rent it out, we've, we've, we don't have any income. Mm -hmm. We are still paying property tax, even though nobody's living there. We're still paying property insurance. This house doesn't have an HOA. Uh, we're not going to start paying property management until it leases out. We're going to pay a leasing commission when it does lease out. And we're going to start accumulating our maintenance reserve when it leases out. Because even though we just flipped it, it's a beautiful house, that roof is not going to last forever. That air conditioner yeah. is not going to last forever. So we're going to reserve for that. Um, we, Real, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, you no. can finish your. Well, I was just going to say, we were paying for utilities for the first four months, mm -hmm. but we're not paying for utilities anymore. Um. So this kind of says, okay, you were, your operating expenses originally were $1,186 a month. Um, they, they kicked up because we had this leasing commission, but now our operating expenses are $1,245, but we're bringing in $4,200 a month. We have a, um, this is a pretty neat thing here I want to point out real quick. Our original hard money loan payment was $3,250 a month. Wow. But we refinanced it to a 30-year loan, and our loan payment dropped to nine fifty two a month. Amazing, isn't it? Yes. So I went from feeding this thing $4,436 a month right. to making $2,000 a month. I like this house a lot. This is not real. There's no, no chance. I do want to uh, add something. that you, it's, At four months, you do have it as a cash-out refi. You would only be able to do a rate term, but at oh. six months you would have. But it's just two months. Okay. Okay. Um, but a rate term, you're going to get a little bit better rate. You're just not going to be able to pull the cash out. I need to make this thing limit it to where it can do the most loan it can do without turning it into a cash out. I need I need to add a, a stop in here that says, hey, um, you know, do you actually want to do a cash out or do you just want to do? Oh, a toggle. Like yeah, you, oh, yeah. Gotcha. We need to add Option. that to mm -hmm. where someone can choose because we could just add it to max LTV, not necessarily that the LTV is specifically seventy five percent. It's hey, we're gonna repay, we're gonna pay all our loan costs and pay off our our, our original loan up to a seventy five percent loan to value. There it is. That's what we need to put in here. Yeah. But in any event, so I just changed it down to thirty three hundred dollars instead of forty two hundred dollars of, of of rent, um, and so now we're at twelve twenty. <laughs> but I think if this thing is going to keep on working for wow. me, uh, so now we can come over here to our financial analysis, and this is telling me that my cash on cash return for this deal is in year wow. ten. I have a twelve percent cash on cash return. If I was to sell this at the end of year two, I have a 56% internal rate of return. If I was to sell it at the end of year five, I have a 31% IRR. This is amazing. Yeah. We want this house. Gabe and I are yeah. going to go buy we're, this house we're, as we're soon already, as we stop this show. I, I'm making a call right now. Yeah. I've been emailing, so we're... Uh... Yeah, I mean, but anyway, so this is part of what we provide with the software is, you know, you can take all these details that we just went it's over, beautiful. put them down on a piece of paper, and you can tell somebody, hey... That is a good deal. Or you can say, no, it's not a good deal, and let me show you why it's not a good deal. I know you do that now, but right. this is another way to do well, the same thing. Well, that just puts hard numbers behind right. our, you know, our experience. Right, right. And it's, so, and it's, it's beautiful. It's well laid out. It's, well, thanks. Uh, thanks. It's, um, you know, if you're numbers-driven as well as um, just – uh, savvy uh, in, in investment. It, it fits both both models. So. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. And I'll tell you something that's really cool about this also before before we leave this. Mm -hmm. You can go to edit details and you can change any of the details that we typed in. We can change those on the fly. We can even say, hey, you know what? For whatever reason, I thought this was going to work well as a hard money deal, but I just want to buy it with cash and then I want to refinance to permanent. Yep. And you can click this button and everything will stay 
as as you entered it, except it'll it'll no longer have a hard money loan component. It'll right. just have cash. And over here, if we say, hey, you know what? I'm worried. Um, it's really going to be six months until lease. Well, you can just change that to six months. There and then you come back over here to flip to rent. And now look at this. Instead of having four months of vacancy, we now have six months of vacancy. And all these expenses that originally picked up at, at month five, now they pick up in month seven because we leased it out after six months well, of vacancy. It sounds like the tool that we were just talking about is already in, embedded in it. It it pretty it pretty much point, is. I, guess. I think that we need to just tweak. There's always tweaks, and I think talking to people. I mean, look, I know how I would analyze something, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but but I'm not every user, right? So I have to go to someone like you, and you got to say, well, Morgan, I think this is really cool. But what I find is that half the time it works the way you just described it, mm-hmm. and half the time it works this other way. Can we accommodate that? The autonomy of it, yeah. Yeah, and and I just call somebody and say, hey, add this feature. So, and what's really cool also, you can't see it here, but it does also give you the, here we, I pulled it back up on the screen. It, it pulls up the street view. I don't know why this wasn't copied up to the top, but it'll use Google street view and some other things like that just to throw a, a picture in there. Uh, so you can see it. That's a great piece of land. That's a, I think that's bigger. So than, are we going to see this after, yeah, after this is over? Yeah, we'll, we'll go, we'll go down, we'll get a burger at Southwell's there it is. and we'll, uh, <laughs> shotgun and, and, we'll, <laughs> and we'll check this no, thing out as I'm riding uh, yeah. <laughs> passenger seat, not anything other than that. Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, that's right. <laughs> Perfect. But, uh, but anyway, okay. Well, I'm, I, I'm glad that we were able to use the, 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 the numbers and the details that we discussed in a, in a, illustrate in a, them, yep. to illustrate them, yep. uh, probably should have pulled that up sooner in the conversation and flipped back and forth. But, uh, you Which know, I'm, well. I'm, I'm glad to be able to work that in. Yeah, that's perfect. So, it's beautiful. So, Gabe, I want to wrap it up, but I okay. want you to tell us how can someone get a hold of you and, and uh, you know, how can you work with them? For sure. Uh, and thank you for asking. Uh, well, we can find us at blinklending.com. Okay. Uh, 713-GO-BLINK is our, is our main number. Okay. Uh, my cell phone is 713-545-8757. If you want to... Uh, reach out directly to me. Text works well. Uh, phone call, um, and then of course social media. You know, uh, blinklending dot com. Uh, I'm you know at at Gabe Lukish uh, on all platforms. Um, picking up TikTok as uh, um, is TikTok. starting. TikTok. I yeah. do not have TikTok. Oh my! It's uh, <laughs> well. Don't get stuck in the um, in it because it's. It, I get upset with my kids and you know spending so much time on it, and then I got it, and now I'm. The culprit now you're on it yeah and it's just it's kind of fun but anyway i didn't mean to get in that rabbit hole but yeah, yeah. you can find us there at private uh private money lender cool so um anywhere uh again re- uh, reach out um our website again blinklending.com i love it thank you so much yep. thank you so all right well there you have it everybody that was uh gabe lukish with blink lending joining us to discuss everything private money and conventional lending and flipping and wholesale well not really wholesaling but all those things involved and he does do wholesaling uh so be sure to reach out to gabe if you need anything uh thanks for joining me i will be sure to be back uh next week with another interesting topic and uh y'all be safe you're listening to the brightline podcast where we talk about investment real estate business, and many other interesting topics. Brought to you by Brightline Property Management. Brightline Property Management is a professional residential property management company located in the Woodlands, Texas, serving the northern Houston area. Additionally, brought to you by Rentalizer, the MLS-driven investment home analyzer. Sign up today at brightlinepodcast.com slash rentalizer. That's R-E-N-T-L-Y-Z-E-R. The Brightline Podcast is produced at Studio 110 in the Woodlands, Texas, the premier studio in the Woodlands. Check out the show's website at brightlinepodcast.com where you can subscribe, contact, and sign up for our newsletter. That's brightlinepodcast.com. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoy our show.